This is the prayer of Jabez. It is one of the most um, utilized prayers that is underutilized by many people. And so what I want to focus in on today is encouraging you to utilize this as your prayer mode. So next year, before every service, we're going to read this prayer. That's going to be our theme next year. We're talking about making room, and that's an important piece, and this fits right into that. So Jabez uh, was more honorable than his brothers. Very important scripture. When scripture talks about something, it's important. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to God of Israel, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And God granted his request. Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Someone say enlarge. Say it like you ate something. Say enlarge my territory. Jabez is an interesting thing because like I've told you prior to that names are very important in the Christian arena and in the Hebrew culture. When they name the child, they, they attach its identity to the name. And so when this mother named her child Jabez, she was in the midst of pain. Maybe she was going to lose her life. And so in the process, she named her child Jabez. Or maybe uh, her son uh, was really a hard pregnancy. But we don't know. We just know that the mother named him son of my pain, son of my sorrow. That's his name. And normally, how important the names were that some Hebrew families, they would wait 30 days to name their child. They would, they would anticipate, see the type of movements that the child makes. And based on the child movements, they would name the child whatever the child is going to be. So if they saw that he had some, uh, uh, he was a male and he would do some things, they name him okay, this, this child may be this in the future, so we're going to name him as that. Or, or the child was a female, and, and they may be this, and so they named him as that. I'm not going to say if he was a male, he's going to be this, because then that becomes sexist. I found out. I was talking. So I was in school writing a paper, right? And, and I told my wife about it. It was funny, because uh, in the paper I wrote, uh, the church consciousness is for the total man. And my professor, who's a female, she scratched it out and wrote me a nice note. You need to be more inclusive. You need to say, how about total person? I was like, oh my God, I didn't, I didn't know. So anyway, this is very conscientious about that. So here the thing is, so he says, yes, we, we need, we need this, this idea that Jabez's name means son of my sorrow. So imagine him in elementary school. What's your name? Beautiful. What's your name? Righteousness. What's your name? Prosperity. Oh, mine is son of my pain. Choir rehearsal. What's your name? praise. What's your name? John, which is the beloved. What, what's, what's your name? And, and, and all of these things, and, and my name is Jabez, son of, my, son of my pain, son of my sorrow. But, but the scripture says very interestingly, before they even tell us about the description, they say that he was more honorable than all his other brothers. So it is possible that you're, you could have been named because of a season but the season doesn't determine your lifetime. So it's important that you and I never let a season determine our lifetime. And never, get, never allow so much pain of a season to cause you to call something something that you may not want to call it in the next season. And so Jabez is, is got this name and he's, he's wrestling with the identity that I am the son of my sorrow. That's what my mama named it. And that's what my daddy agreed to as well. So they both must have been in agreement that this son is son of sorrow. He's son of pain. But here's the unique thing about it, y'all. It says that he's more honorable than all his other brothers, which lets me know that just because his name was that way, he did not act what his name was. He did not let his name 
or the label limit or define who he was. So much so that even though that was his name, he decides to ask God for something that many people do not ask God for. They do not ask God for the vastness of who he is. There is a book I read a couple weeks ago that says that many will get to heaven and they'll walk into the room and this room will be a room full of boxes from the bottom all the way to the, to the ceiling and it will be boxes full of gifts that have been unwrapped and you will ask the angel, well, what, what, what's the meaning of all of this? My name is on it. I see all of these gifts up there. What, what's going on with this? And the angel will say, these are all the things that God wanted to bring into your life, but you never asked for. Because a lot of times we are so scared to ask God to bless us. And the word bless has been traditionally misinterpreted in our culture because it is associated with this prosperity doctrine and so because we don't like the prosperity doctrine because we don't believe it's viable for everybody and it doesn't work in every culture or context so that's why we throw it all away but here's the challenge with that throughout scripture God is a God that talks about blessing his children and just because some people make it an extreme doesn't mean that it's no good God is a God that blesses his children even Jesus prayed that God you would bless them and the word bless there means this when Jabez uses it, it's the terminology that means, I want God to bestow upon me supernatural things that I cannot do in my natural ability. So let me read it like I wrote it in my notes. It says this. It says, um, the, to bless in the biblical sense means to ask or to impart supernatural favor. When we ask God for blessings, we're not asking for more of what we could get for ourselves. We're crying out for the wonderful, unlimited goodness that only God has the power to know about or to give to us. We're calling out for the wonderful, unlimited goodness that only God has the power to know about or give to us. There is a level of blessing or supernatural favor that only God knows about and only God can give us. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how educated you are. There is a blessing that only God can give us. And that is why when we pray, Lord, enlarge our territory. Enlarge our territory is not just about expanding places. It's about expanding God, giving me more opportunity to do more of what he's positioned me for to do in my life. And a lot of us are missing that because we're not asking God, Lord, expand my territory. When Malachi was talking about God will open up the windows of heaven, he wasn't talking about he's going to open up the windows of heaven and throw cars out of it because we'd all be dead. He was talking about giving us opportunity and most of us are asking God for different things but we're not really praying to God like he is God of everything. Lord, I want you to expand my opportunity and Jabez is teaching us a valuable lesson that even though I grew up, <coughs> even though I grew up in the hood, well, even though I grew up in a place that's not perfect, I know that God can expand my territory. I know that God has the power. I know that God has the ability to expand and open up my territory. And most of us are missing it because we do not pray to a God. And most mature Christians are not seeing the hand of God in their lives, moving supernaturally. And sadly, they don't even miss it because they never experienced it. Because we've been taught, like, oh, you don't want to ask God for blessings. I mean, you're so, you, 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 that's just so carnal. But I want my kids to be blessed. I, I want my kids to be blessed. I want my wife to be blessed. I want my parents to be blessed. I want things connected to me to be blessed. And maybe you may be of the school that says, no, I just want to suffer all the days of my life because it gives God glory. And that is true. Suffering does give God glory and suffering does show forth his power but you and I are serving a God who sits high and looks low who made the stars for his entertainment who told the sun to stand still and it doesn't move too far to the left 
too far to the east. And he's saying this that Jabez is recognizing, even though I don't deserve to ask you this, even though my parents said I'm not worthy and I'm just a son of pain and sorrow, I'm going to believe God enough that you have the power to enlarge my territory. It's not just in a business plan. It is in the supernatural favor of God that God, you anoint what I have and give me room for more. And Holy Spirit, my prayer is that you would enlarge my territory. You would enlarge my opportunity. Now, you don't have to pray this if you don't want to. It's in the Bible. And so this is why he says, I want to pray, Lord, enlarge my territory. What I've been familiar with, I want you to expose me to another dimension so I don't settle for this space, but Lord, expose me so that you can enlarge my territory. So here it is. I want to give you this, that sin is a blocker to the flow of God in your life. A lot of times we hear about blessings and we don't talk about the other side of the equation. Sin is a blocker to the flow of God in your life. And so I'm really into um, using pressure washing equipment, and I thank you guys for it because it's a great hobby. So here's the thing. So we turn the hose on. Um, my son and I, we turn the hose on, and we noticed that the water, we could hear it, but we weren't seeing it flow. We heard the water. We felt it but it wasn't flowing. And we realized that it wasn't anything wrong with the water. It wasn't anything wrong with the flow. The issue was the hose had a kink in it. And the kink prohibited the flow of water that was destined to flow out of the hose. And that's what sin is. Sin is a blocker to the flow of God. It doesn't mean that God will not flow if you're in sin. Because if you're saved, God still does good things for us even though we are sinners. You and I would not be alive today if God was basing it off of that. Because we all are sinners. There are sins of omission, sins that we know we did, and sins of commission, sins that we did not know we did but we still sin. So here's the reality. God still does for us as a loving father, but it does inhibit, it does block, it does slow down the flow and the favor of God that should be on your life. And many of us are hearing God, we're feeling God, we see his moving in our holes, but for some odd reason it's not manifesting in our lives. And the reason it's not manifesting is because our lives got kinks in it and the kinks are prohibited the flow of God from happening in our lives. So when we talk about praying that God will enlarge our territory, it is not just to simply say that you are avoiding trial and problem because Jabez said, listen, Lord, I want you to enlarge my territory and I want you to keep me from evil. He didn't say, hold me in evil. Help me be strong in evil. He said, keep me from it. And if you watch how Jesus prayed, Jesus didn't say, uh, keep them in temptation and let them be strong. He said, lead them out of it. Don't let them get around it so that they won't have to make decisions about temptation. So he prays very clearly and very articulately. He says this, I want you to know that I do not want to be in the room of temptation. I don't want to be around it. I don't want to be around evil. Good to see you, Val. I don't want to be around evil. I don't want to be around negative things. I don't want to be around. And so very importantly, what Jesus is saying and what Jabez is saying, keep me from it. Now, here's the thing. Even though you pray that God will keep you from it, the blessing of the Lord will attract it to you. So it's almost a prayer that you know God's like, yeah, you can't have one without the other. You can't have the favor of God without having the attack of humans. You can't have the favor of God without having the attack of family. You cannot have... So when we pray, Lord, enlarge our territory, I want you to understand the other side of the coin. The other side of the coin is that you will get persecution not because they hate you, but because they hate the light that's emanating from you and because they know you're a son of sorrow, daughter of sorrow, and you don't deserve what's happening in your life. They will attack and ostracize what's happening in your life, and that is the other side of the coin. So it doesn't erase 
or escape you from challenges and trials. So here's the thing. Um, so when we pray that the Lord would bless us indeed, it does not mean that God would bless me so much that it would exempt me from going through real life. Every one of us will go through the valley of shadow death. So um, my, my mom, that's probably several weeks ago, it was on Thanksgiving. You know, when the older you are, I realize that you don't know how to tell people bad news. When they get older, they just tell it to you at the most inopportune time. So it's Thanksgiving. It, you know, we sitting around getting ready to eat. I had already went to Mama Ritz's house and Elder Jonathan's house and got my first um, function of food. And so this was my second installment and, uh, at my house. And uh, my mom comes by and sits by me. And, you know, when she starts whispering, you know, she's going to drop a bomb on you. And uh, this is the, right before Thanksgiving. At least she could have waited until the dinner was over. Um, she comes over and says, hey, baby, I just want to tell you, the doctors found two cancers on my brain. And I'm thinking, well, first off, that's very sad. But secondly, did you have to tell me before we were about to eat? Because, I mean, like, this whole Thanksgiving is almost ruined from your testimony, right? So then she, she says, but I, what, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pray and, and just trust God. My life is in the master's hands. Okay. So December 6th, she goes to the doctor for a re second review. The doctor says, well, I don't know what they found the first time, but I don't see what they found. Now, pause. <clears throat> now, that, that's what you anticipate people doing, clapping and saying, praise God. But that's not the angle that I want to take. The angle that I want to take is this. If they did find it, God is still blessing you in spite of a season that is not blessed. Okay, so today is a rainy day. It is not a good day at all. But we're still coming to church tonight at 6.30. So, because so, we paid for this guy to come speak, and we're we all going to hear him because we paid for him to speak. So, so listen, his flight's been paid. He's at the higher. He's all, all this stuff, right? So we're going to be here tonight. So here's the thing. It's a bad day today. It's a bad day. You would agree, unless you like the rain. If you like the rain, you're just a little weird. But okay, it's a, it's a bad day. It's a bad day. It's rainy. It's, it's not a fun day. Nobody wants to go out. Nobody. It just alters your mood. It makes you want to stay in bed longer. It, I just looked up and I said, can I call in sick? I guess I can. I can't do that, right? So it just, it just all this. But I will not say we had bad weather all month because I had bad weather one day. See, what we do with our lives is we get mad at God because we had bad weather for a day when God has given us good weather all month. And so we got to learn how to say the Lord has blessed me even when I don't feel like I've been blessed the most because a lot of times we're mad at God when he's saying, I've done you well. I've done well by you. And just because you have a moment that doesn't good look good doesn't mean you have a lifetime that is not good. So I want to close with this. So that you would bless me indeed, that you enlarge my territory. Oh Lord, bless me indeed. It's a small prayer. It's a simple prayer, but it's a powerful prayer. That God, you would take my little fish, my little loaves of bread, and you would multiply. That beyond my abilities, beyond my talents, beyond who I am, you would give me opportunities that I don't deserve because of your supernatural hand on my life. God's made that available to all of us. So now all of you, when you wake up in the morning, you can pray 1 Chronicles 4, 8 through 10, or it's 9 through 10. It's very two verses. You don't have to pray Jabez, son of my sorrow. You can skip that. And you can pray, Lord, I just pray that you would enlarge my territory, right? Here's the thing. So I was with, um, I went to lunch with Jamichael um, and we were talking and he said a point that I thought was so um, valiant. We were talking about how as a people, uh, for example, our, my kids, when we go to a public restroom, or our kids, um, when we go to a public restroom, 
they oftentimes will stick their hand underneath the sink and expect the water to come out on their hand. Now, it's interesting to me because at our house, we don't have a sink that automatically drops water <laughs> on your hand. But within them, they feel like whenever they go to a public space, that if they just put their hand underneath the sink long enough, water will eventually come out. And that's how a lot of us live our Christianity. We put our hands underneath the faucet and we expect God to pour out what he's capable of pouring out because I'm here. I have a right to this. I expect you to, to pour on me because... I've, I've been do I've showed up. You owe me because I showed up. The least you could do for me is pour on my hand. Look, God, you, 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 you know, out of all the people, I saw you walking in Rosemary, and all, all the people that, that, that I could see, you know, I, I, you, I deserve for you to pour on my hand. I, I deserve because I showed up. You know, I, I'm here. I done did what I need to do. And, and then after a while, once you see that it's not pouring, we end up getting mad at the faucet. Because you're not moving at the speed that I anticipated you to move. But there are times where the faucet is not going to pour out water automatically. There are times where you have to turn the knob. Because not everything is going to be done because you expect it to be done. The trickery of it is just because in one season you put your hand out and God pours doesn't mean in the next season you're just going to put your hand out and God's going to pour. There are some seasons you show up and you just stick your hand out and God supernaturally pours on your life. And then there are other seasons where God is going to have you do some work for it. And I don't know what season you're in, but I do know, I, I know for a fact that the Holy Spirit and God's plans for our lives is to flow through our lives. You know, when, when, when you get caught up in some, when, you're, when your hose is locked up for so long, the hose begins to shake violently because the water wants to get out. And sometimes the reason why our lives are shaking so violently is because God is trying to get out of our lives and trying to work those kinks out of our lives. And so he's shaking. And, and when the water comes out, it comes out everywhere because God's been holding back his good pleasure, pressed down, shaking together, running over for so long over your lives. So my prayer for you and our prayer for all of us today is that we'll pray the prayer of Jabez that, Lord, you would enlarge my territory, that you would increase me. I don't care where you came from. I don't care how bad your life started. I don't care how bad your life began. It is not a prohibitor from you being able to call upon God and asking him to expand what you have currently. Do not limit the God of your salvation, but do not sit there with an attitude and have your hand out forcing God to pour water when you should be in a season of work. So I want to balance it to not, you're just sitting at home next year, 2019. What you been doing? Making room. You working? Nope. Just saying the prayer of Jabez. Oh Lord, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. No, 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 I, I, you got to, you got to, you got to, there's some seasons where God will supernaturally do things. You're just in a rhythm. It's like you put your hand out and water is everywhere. God is just blessing, but then there are some seasons where you got to do some work. Lord, enlarge my territory as I work. And God will do it. Let's not make God, so let's not make God as big as our limitations but let's make God as big as the scriptures say he is let's not make God as big as our limitations but let's not make God let's make God as big as the scriptures say he is if he owns a cattle upon a thousand hills let's believe him for that 
If he's the God that can let, let you go through suffering and give you grace through it, let's go through that. But let's not choose the side of God we want to experience. Because we, we okay, so I'm going to close with this. And that's my second, third closing. All right. How many of you want to get to know God more? Raise your hand. Better yet, how many of you want to get to know God more? Stand. All right, look around. Look around. Look, look how many people stood and said, I want to get to know God more. Now sit down. Let me tell you what you just signed up for, John. I just, I just want you to know, John, because you stood up with great audacity, like, yeah, I want to I wanna know God more. See, I'm more reserved now. I done lived with God a little while. I'm like, okay, well, I, I need to process this. Because if I need to know God more now, if I need to know him as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer, then that means you may go through a season of sickness so that you can know that he heals. If you want to know him as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider, you may have to go through a season where you don't have enough to know that he's the God of more than enough. So you can know that he's a friend that sits closer than a brother. You're going to have to have some people walk out on you so that you can know that you can call upon the name of the Lord at all times. So when you say you want more of God, you cannot just have a side of him and not have the other side of him. If you want to know God, you got to know all of him. And there's a lot to know. There's a lot of depth to know. There's a lot of you that can say, man, I lost someone I really, really cared about, really, really loved, and the Lord has been my help. He's been my provider. He's been my sustainer. And when we say we want to get to know the Lord, don't just limit to it. I just want to see his blessing. I just want to see his hand. Well, sometimes you may see his back. Sometimes you may see his face. Sometimes you may see his hand. But if you want to see more of God, it comes with everything. So some of you that stood up, I've been walking with Jesus for 20 years. He still got infinity years that you ain't never seen. I've been walking with the Lord 40 years. He still got infinity years that you haven't even touched. You haven't even touched the drop of his bigness. But my prayer for you is that when God starts to show you who he is, you don't get mad, take your hand away from the faucet and walk away. Father, I pray that we said your word in the capacity in which you told us to say it. 